So, but again, just to kind of preface it, I, I'm not here to convince you. I'm sure. not here for a gotcha moment. I, I, if, you, if you got me, it's, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I appreciate that. Okay. But, but again, mate, my, my thing it, it transcends all this. Okay. It's um, it's the, it's the whole reason that I'm here, which is I genuinely believe in God. Yeah. I believe that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the final messenger. Sure. Uh, I, I will present to you my definition of God okay. and see what you think All right. and I'll give you adequate time and All it will right, be yeah. more of a conversation go, go rather than me speaking at you sure. and I hope you kind of enjoy this and it's, you learn something from me and I learn something from it as All well. Right, yeah. So Michael, what I was saying is with, when it comes to the Antichrist, we believe that he can come and he will claim to be God and he will be able to show things that might be able to fulfill your criteria. And however, some people are even of the opinion that hologram technology has reached such a level yeah. that, I mean, some people are saying that even although it's being regarded as conspiracy, but some people are saying that certain things have actually been hologram events and that's up to them to kind of discuss and debate that. So what, what I would argue, what I would say is before I even get to that, here's the Islamic stance, here's my stance of God and let me know what you think about this and right. I'd love for you to challenge it, yeah? All right. So as a Muslim, I believe there's a four-pronged uh, kind of criteria of God, the one, okay. yeah. uh, the independent, does not beget, nor is he begotten, All right. and there's none like him. Okay. Yeah. So when you look at the creator as a Muslim, that's our definition of God. What do you think about what I've just said so far? I, I, that's perfectly fine if that's what God is. I'm not opposed to that being the truth. Okay. In terms of criteria of God, what about if somebody said God is a tree? God is a tree. That just sounds weird to me. Okay, great. If somebody said, oh, God is that guy over there that's sitting under the tree. Uh, I would be very, very skeptical. Okay, fantastic. So I was just checking that the yeah. definition that I've given you, it resonates with your innate disposition. Like it, sure. nothing kind of sticks out of the ordinary. Yeah, yeah okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, philosophically, do you accept that there is a necessary being? No. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so let's start with there, Michael. All right. So in terms of us as human beings, uh, would you say that we are dependent or independent? I mean, we're dependent on each other. We're dependent on the sun. So in that sense, we depend on other people to survive and fantastic. other things to survive. Fantastic. Yeah. So we depend on something. That thing depends on something. That thing depends on something. It if it, on the sun eventually. Exactly, and that depends on something that relies on hydrogen and helium and yeah. that requires yeah. nuclear yeah. fission and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it keeps going on and on and on and on. I, I would argue, and so have philosophers, uh, and the first step would be, because we're dealing with philosophy here, yeah? So philosophically, if we look at dependencies yeah. and we keep going on, philosophically, there has to be an end to that chain of dependencies which philosophically is called a necessary being. And the, a, a simple analogy that I can put forward for that is, if I am to throw a ball yeah, and I have to ask this person's permission, he has to ask this person's permission. And if it goes on for infinity, asking permissions, would I ever get to throw the ball? Well, maybe you don't need to ask permission to throw a ball. I feel like that's a weird analogy. Yeah, but if I required permission, yeah. Let's just say I came up with a better analogy, but it, this was a simple analogy. A child that requires permission to, I don't know, uh, eat the cookies so, or okay, any analogy. I, 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 understand you see? Your, I understand your point. So like a, an atheist might respond and say, well, there are... Just before that, just sorry, before that, like, just so I can yeah, finish right, it. Yeah. So if it goes on for infinity, would I ever get to throw the ball? Yes, no, you would not. That's so, the, yeah, so there has to be an end to that chain for me to throw the ball. Go ahead. Oh, well, I guess uh, an atheist, which I'm not, would say there's just innate laws of physics that just haven't existed, and that's the end final point. Right, but, but when you're talking about a final point, a final point of what, though? What came before oh, the final point? Thing. Okay. You have to ask permission of laws of physics, can I do this? And right, right, right. So this is an analogy for dependencies. So yeah. in order to make that argument, one would have to concede that there can be an infinite regress. There is such a thing as infinite regress. 
Okay, sure. Do you see? Whatever. Which is... No, no, no. no. Right. Okay. So, so here's the thing, Michael. I'm, I'm not here to kind of put forward an argument if it's not settling well with you. I'd rather you pushed back you're, you're, and we just you stood are, by that. You are, you are claiming that there needs to be some initial source for the universe effectively. What, what I'm saying is that there's no such thing as infinite regress. So if we are dependent things and dependency goes on forever, it would be an absurdity because just like I wouldn't be able to throw a ball, you and I wouldn't be able to exist. What if the dependency is a circle and eventually it comes back to you and you're able to give yourself permission? Right, so the thing with that is it's like a mother giving birth to a child. Yeah. Which is circularity, which is irrational. Uh, well, obviously mother giving birth to the child analogy doesn't fit this. But well, asking permission to throw a ball, I think like, you could do that. Right, so if we then stick with this yeah. specific analogy, it would be, uh, uh, we're talking in terms of dependencies, right? I guess. Okay, so in terms, so in terms of the, because I was, I thought you went back to the ball one. Oh sure. That's yeah. why I wanted to make okay. sure. Yeah. So in terms of the dependencies, um, so, so the dependency or the cause would be the effect of its of the thing that gave it cause. Do you see? Your your point is there cannot be an infinite regress and a, or a loop. It needs to go to a finite point where the permission is granted. I, I'm saying that circularity can't work. Is, yeah, it doesn't okay. work. And I'm also arguing, which you can push back. I'd, lo I'd love that. So linear-wise, it doesn't work either. Okay. So I, I want to hear why you would think it works, and then I then then I can respond to that. Uh, I mean, in terms of the permission thing, I can understand why this does not work. Yeah, so I'll, I'll accept that. For them. Yeah. So think of it similarly in terms of dependencies as well. Sure. If everything depended on something that depended on something that yeah. depended on something. Forever. Yeah, do you see? Yeah. For sure. us being here, yeah. it's, it's something it's, at the start. Yeah. Which in philosophy they call the necessary necessary existence. Sure. Yeah, which is something yeah. accepted by Aristotle, yeah. Leibniz, Kant yeah. and the likes. What do you think about this so far? Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So this is the, pretty much the starting point of even Western philosophy that they don't necessarily have an have an issue with a necessary being. They have an issue with a necessary being being God. That's okay. that's where the yeah. issue comes in. Sure. Yeah, which is probably yeah. where you'll be able to relate more. Okay. Now now what do you think about when I say that this necessary existence is independent? Uh, as in this necessary thing does not, it's just like an innate thing that exists on its own. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. What, what about if this necessary existence has power? An immeasurable amount of power. Well, so that, this gets more into where I said, what if it's just laws of physics that just exist permanently? Okay. Maybe they don't have power, they're just laws exist. Right, but, but bear in mind, there's something called the fallacy of reification. Okay. Yeah, laws are, uh, are prescriptive and descriptive. Laws don't create things. For example, for example, the law of arithmetic. Yeah, the law of arithmetic can tell me how much money there are in my, there is in my bank account, yeah. but the law of arithmetic cannot create the money in the first place. The law of motion. You're more than welcome to jump in if you want. You're more than welcome to jump in with that if you got. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so the law of motion is not something that moves the billiards ball. Um, the law of motion describes the movement of the ball. Rather, it is the, the person with holding the cue, the one causing the ball to move. The law of motion describes the movement. So laws are descriptive, they are not creative. Sure. So, when, so, so, what, what if so the fallacy of reification, just to kind of um, complete that point, fallacy of reification is when you give something that's abstract, concrete properties. So when they say, for example, chance created this, forces created this. So attributing creative power to forces is what I was just emphasizing here. Go ahead. Okay, so well, um, laws of physics like you know, gravity, relativity have influenced a lot of the motion and like we talked about the sun. And I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're saying is there must be something else that set it all in motion to begin with. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, forces require something. Um, to, to direct them because forces 
are unconscious, they are blind, um, they are abstract. Yeah. So to, to say that a force has created something like a, a fully... Like a big bang. Yeah, like the, like the Big Bang or even Planet Earth. Yeah. If we just attribute that to, like Stephen Hawking said, to um, gravity, yeah. he says in his book, The Grand Designer, uh, or The Grand Design, um, that gravity created everything. But to say that the gravity itself is creating, like you've got the river, the, the mountains, the trees, etc. Yeah. So uh, to that I would say, okay, appealing to laws of physics, still sticking with this, there's either some other laws of physics we don't know yet, or there is some other thing that set it in motion. I can accept that. But then I would come back to the philosophical argument. Yeah. Is that thing itself, because philosophically, um, dependency and independency, if you want to look technically, because it's recorded, when you get a chance of me go back home and you're like, what did this bearded guy tell me? You know, is he just waffling? Right. So what I want to say is stuff that you can maybe refer back to as well. Yeah, sure. So although I used simplistic words like dependent and independent, yeah. that's known as the contingency argument. And the technical terms are contingent and necessary. That's why I said that the end of that chain is a necessary existence, the necessary being. Yeah. So the, the definition of something that's contingent is something that is made of parts um, because th think about it Michael if something's made out of parts and you take that part out then that thing is dependent upon the part isn't it so it, it breaks down yeah so it's, it's, it's not independent so contingent I'm using contingent and dependent interchangeably yeah so so, so it's cons it's made of parts it can cease to exist and it can't be any other way something that's necessary is it's not consistent of parts can't be any other way and it can't cease to exist so uh, coming back to your energy thing if you come back to the energy thing is energy composed of parts of course energy is composed of parts can energy be any other way can be any other way can energy cease to exist it can cease to exist so it doesn't fulfill the criteria of uh, because think about it I mean the law of thermodynamics or uh, or, or the or second law of thermodynamics that the net change in entropy is always positive. Is that what you're referring to? Not necessarily in, in the sense that when people talk about energy, uh, energy being removed in one aspect but then coming it in another converted. form. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's converted. But that again is within the, the paradigm of the world as we know it. Since yeah. the Big Bang, the time and space, etc. Et sure. So with pertaining to that, if we look at the definition of necessity, not being composed of parts, can't be any other way, and cannot cease to exist. It cannot be uh, energy. And when we're looking at independent, energy isn't necessarily independent. It's reliant upon something else as well, isn't it? Uh, yes. So coming back to the power thing, power by definition, you get from that which you come from. Yeah? So if, if something creates something, that thing relies on it, for power that's okay. that's the nature of power All so right. if we then go in this infinite regress would it make sense to you with what I've said that this necessary existence also makes sense for it to have power as well uh, sure it has power okay so it has power it has independence yeah would you say it has intelligence maybe okay now, I would make the argument for intelligence, yeah? Okay. And then let me know if it. that's convincing yeah. to you because uh, the DNA. Our yeah? DNA. Our DNA. All right. Or DNA even in general as well sure. of, uh, of, of living beings. Are your hands cold? I, I have poor blood circulation. I'm fine. Okay, you can, you're more than welcome to. Take your, no, I'll listen to your talk. Okay, yeah. but if you need gloves, just ask me. I have can use, Okay. Because I want you to be comfortable. Thank you. Um, I'm listening. That's fine. So, so the last thing, huh, intelligence. So, DNA has a great deal of information. Yeah. Um, now, the argument would be, <laughs> where, where has this information come from? An analogy that I would like to use for this would be a dictionary. Yeah? Okay. That dic a dictionary has a great deal of information. Can you give me an example of something that has a great deal of information that has come from something non-intelligent? Great deal of information from something non-intelligent. Which is what we're claiming of our DNA. That, that's the link. Well, I, I can think of smart aleck answers of some dumb people saying things. But um, 
Uh, no. I'm, I'm speaking to Michael. <laughs> no. Okay, so bearing that in mind, Michael, I would argue that considering the amount of information that's present in our DNA, and you use this biology from like A level, adenine, thymine, guatinine, and you know, ATGC, you know, the DNA sequences and all that sort of stuff, and then how that's used to make genes, make chromosomes. So, this is something that I was looking into as well because I thought if if I come across somebody like Michael and I and I have to tell them that look I have to prove to them that this necessary existence has intelligence sure. what would I say to Michael and, yeah, one, and one of the things that 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 was an example but one of the things I would say is uh, objective and mathematical you're economist yeah a little bit okay so a bit of math so mathematically um, and objectively, there are things of design in creation. And I would argue, and hopefully you would agree as well, that when a person sees design, that points towards an intelligence. Typically, yeah. So when you look at, say, the Fibonacci sequence, or the golden ratio, the golden yeah. spiral, yeah. even symmetry in nature like the butterflies, um, and even when you take like the, um, the, the the golden spiral and the golden ratio, that's we see this in uh, sunflower seeds. We use this. Uh, we see them in like leaves on yeah. stems as well. So the complexity and the design in nature is something that I, I would argue can be objectively and mathematically measured. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. So if there is design, uh, it makes sense that it comes from an intelligent source, hence the necessary being, it makes sense for us to claim that he's intelligent or it's intelligent. Whatever this initiating source yeah. is, has intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Okay. Sure. And would you agree and would you accept now that it also has wisdom? I need you to define wisdom. Okay, so wisdom is applying the correct information in the correct capacity and at the right time. For example, so, for, I'll give you an example. I, I teach my son that look, disabled people are in wheelchairs and you know, we should be kind to them, etc, etc. And um, my son, he sees a person in a wheelchair and then he goes, hey, you're disabled. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not wise. That's, it's not a wise statement to make. So I would say to him, but he's like, but dad, so he's got intelligence, he's absorbed the information, but what he's doing with that is he's not being wise because he's not applying the intelligence in the right place. So it's like decision making. This is your making. This is your making. So the question is this intelligent initial source, is there intelligent or is there like wise decision making? Yeah, so I'm saying design of the application of the intelligence. Very good, yeah. Is that the idea? Yeah. Um I'm going to say it does not necessarily need to be that way. Okay. The reason... You have to convince me. Go ahead. Okay. So if if we look at, for example, the intricate way in which the, the, the ecosystem is on this yeah. planet, yeah. when we look at... Um, I'm having to go back to uh, A-level biology now. Um, food webs. Remember food webs? Yeah. That this organism depends on this, yeah. that depends on this, that depends on this. So that shows that these organisms being dependent and then when you take one organism out yeah. of the ecosystem then the other one grows and then it becomes chaos so in other words things have been put in their right places for example our hair would grow our eyebrows would not grow otherwise we'd have to go to the barbers you know every yeah it would be really annoying if our brain was on our hands you know if our heart was on our backside we wouldn't be able to sit down so the way things have been proportioned the things like Einstein said the fact that this world is even comprehensible raises questions as to the one that's brought it into existence I'm kind of doing um, adding a bit of detail to Einstein I'm not saying he's saying all of this Einstein's clear statement was the fact that we can even comprehend this world is you know something worth thinking about yeah you're gonna say something uh, I'll hold it okay so the reason why I would say he's wise is because creating everything with intricacy, with precision, with order, 
that requires wisdom. Yeah. But was everything made with precision and wisdom? I, or just I would, a lot of things. Yeah, I, I would argue so. And the reason being, uh, because the, the argument that some people would would claim was, oh, this thing. Like, I'll give you an example. Yeah, a lot of things don't work out on Earth. That that we know of. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Like when I was doing biology A level, uh, we came across a term called junk DNA. Junk DNA. Junk DNA. Yeah. yeah. So it was DNA that. Did nothing. Well, we we said it didn't do anything, but now. Um, the more we know about genetics, we've discovered that that actually switches on and off genes and then are, they've now retracted that term as well of junk DNA. The yeah. appendix, yeah. that was seen as something it stupid. Something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's argument from ignorance. Um, and because we're, we're, we're limited beings, what we do is we base anything that we come across in science based on induction. So induction is based on our limited observation. Yeah. which is constantly subjected to change. So we can't necessarily say that, oh, because we don't know what X thing does, therefore it doesn't, um, the, therefore there's no, yeah, there's no wisdom behind it. Okay, so. So I would say in order to be intelligent, wisdom follows. Because just being intelligent without wisdom is pretty pointless. Right, but it's not impossible. Can you give me, can, it's, it's not impossible. Like but, suppose there's some all-knowing, all-powerful God who just does random stuff. <laughs> How do we know he didn't just say, oh, like, let's make Earth and let's design the human body in this wonderful way without the heart on the hands or whatever you said. And design this all wonderfully. And then I'm just going to go do random stuff elsewhere just because I can. Like, there's a big universe out there with ostensibly nothing. So I'm going to answer what an Oxford professor answered once. Uh, so when this question was somewhat posed to him, he said three points. He said the fact that there is uniformity. Um, there were three things he said, uniformity, regularity and stability. Yeah. Yeah. And the example that he used was the mere fact that I can hold my glove out yeah. and my glove is not floating away. It's not randomly combusting. It's not just being sucked into the Earth's gravity. Indicates that there is a level of consistency. There is a, a, leg, sure. a level of uniformity, regularity and stability in nature for us to even do science. So for us to say, uh, so I guess that would be a response to your thing that if things were random, then we wouldn't even be able to do oh, science. I did not say everything was random. I know, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is that there's enough in our universe for us to live our daily life, enjoy I, our life. Yeah. I can agree with all of this, but I'm just saying that to me does not prove that God or this initial source is wise and doing everything with wisdom. It just means this earth was created with wisdom. Right. right. So, so you accept that he would use wisdom to create a... Well, maybe, maybe there's still something on Earth we haven't discovered yet that was not created with this. I'm just saying, I guess this to me does not a proof of its accuracy. Is it, it, what you're saying is consistent with a God who is wise, but it's not, in my opinion, it's not convincing me that it must be that way. Okay, but, so, so that's fine, we can come back to that. But is it, are you saying that there's any issue with it being wise? I do not have a problem. If there is a wise God, that is totally cool. I'm down with that. No, would it, would it make sense to you, the fact that it's intelligent, powerful, independent, would it be inconceivable for you to consider it as wise? No, I'm, I, I have, it's definitely conceivable. I'm just saying I'm agnostic for a reason, which is I have not proven it. Okay, okay. Yeah. So wisdom is the thing that, that you're saying is Well, you've, the you've issue. done a pretty good job on most of the others in wisdom, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So wisdom is the thing that's so far. the obstacle at the moment, yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's, let's break down wisdom a little bit then. So if we're looking... Sit behind you. Uh, do you want to ask if she's okay because she's your mother? I don't want to keep uh, her in the cold. She's fine. Yeah, let me know. Are you okay? Yeah. Because I said, are you okay? What, what, yeah, yeah. When you guys need to leave, uh, just let us know. I don't want to hold you. We're good, right? All right. Okay, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. fantastic. Because if my mom was here, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, Seeing you reminds me of my own mom. 
Independent, powerful. powerful. Uh, did we talk about powerful? Power, power. Oh, uh, we did talk about. Did we say all powerful or just powerful? Just power. Just power. Immeasurable. He has he immeasurable has power. power. Independent, yeah. power, intelligent, and we're on wisdom now. So, so, so wisdom would be putting things yeah. in their right place. Sure. Yeah. So, I think when we when we look at the way design is, mm -hmm. just look at the human body. Yeah, we got the human body. Yeah. Inside it are organs. Yeah. Inside the organs, we have tissues. Inside the tissues, we have cells. Okay. Inside the cells, we have organelles. Yeah. Inside the organelles, we have gene chromosomes. No, I, I can agree. It's incredibly detailed. And yeah. so, so that's why I'm saying putting things in the right place. Uh, I, I guess I'd already covered this before, but I just wanted to double check the mere presence of food webs and how they are intricately related, even as organism, even something as small as an atom. When you look at the way the nucleus is, the protons and the neutrons and the electrons, then you've got the leptons and the bosons. And when you look at the way all of these things have been put in the right place for life to exist, for life to be present, that indicates wisdom. Because wisdom is putting things in the right place. If things were not in their right place, then that argument could have been made that, you know what, things aren't in their right place, things are all over the place, things are chaotic. If, you know, one one minute the queen pops up there, the next... So, yeah, go ahead. So, are we good? Sorry, guys. Let this pass, then I'll respond. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> So is he? Yes, nice one. Good, good topic though, I love it. Have you guys been to Winter Wonderland? So I've heard mixed reviews about it. It's at the top of my list. Yeah? was that the human body is created with such detail and so articulately that this is consistent with a story where God is wise. Is that the comment you're making? Not necessarily. Okay. What I'm saying is that if wisdom is defined as putting things in their right place, yes. and a case study of that is a human being, yeah. and the human being, uh, by looking at our physiology, uh, even if you take other things around us, when you look at the physiology of those things, it indicates that things have been put in their right place for them to produce functionality and a purpose that indicates wisdom. Okay, so I, I can agree that this is consistent with a story of wisdom, but I'm going to ask you if there's another possible explanation, which is, suppose this powerful, intelligent God is still subject to laws of physics and cannot break these laws of physics and thus created Earth using some limited ability and those laws of physics naturally resulted in the evolution of humankind to how we are today. Is it possible that this is consistent with what we're observing but not necessarily a result of wisdom of God? The only issue with that would be that what we know of the Big Bang is the, the beginning of time and space and we believe uh, the necessary being has to be outside of time and space because time and space are those things that limit it. And because we agreed at the beginning that the necessary being is independent, it's not limited um, or dependent on anything. So, well, okay, sorry yeah. I'm interrupting you. Yeah, so, yeah go ahead. Can, can this independent being cannot change the laws of physics or can? No, 
the independent being is not dependent on the law of physics. He can change the laws of physics. Of course. So I'm not, I'm not saying... So the, the laws of physics just exist. And so what if the ind this independent being just created some basic form of life on Earth and those laws of physics result in an evolution and the current humankind we observe today? Is that possible? So you're saying, has this necessary being put certain things in place yeah. that we are seeing today? Right. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that we do believe. We don't okay. believe that the, the necessary being would have to physically be tinkering with every little thing. Right. It's some things can be created, and and but but there is a sense of maintenance as well. Okay. Yeah, maintenance. Otherwise, um, yeah, it, it would fall in that deistic belief right. in God, which is this necessary <laughs> existence created everything and like uh, a wind-up toy. Everything is just kind of just doing its thing. Way is out. Yeah. Okay, so I, as I, I'm kind of repeating myself, I can accept that the observations on Earth are consistent with some wisdom in God, but it is also possible that there are other actions by God that are not wise, right? Like what? I don't know what they would be, but it's, is it possible? Given this, like we're saying, we have a case study that implies God is wise, but we are not observing all of God's actions. Thus, how do we know they're all wise? Mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm saying is that we're using the scientific inquiry here, which is induction. So induction, just like with any science that we're doing, um, whether it's you know coming up with vaccines, yeah. whether it's coming up with you know um, uh, you know cures or whatnot. Interrupt. Are you saying no, no, given the observable evidence, we should conclude that God is wise? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying the in in science we use induction. And then we, we perform experiments and then once we've done enough, we say the inference to the best explanation is X. Okay. So I can accept if, we, if your claim is the best explanation is that yeah. God is wise, that's fine. But it is also possible that we have not yet learned. There's more things still to learn. That's what I would say. That's fine. Yeah. So I guess what I'm trying to say to you, just like with everything else, we say the inference to the best explanation is that copper conducts electricity, that, you know, the forecaster said that it's going to rain, or... <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Um, yeah, so, so the inference to the best explanation, yeah, was this. But, but, but then I would also appeal to my original point, which was that if, if we believe that this necessary being is intelligent, is powerful, it has will, wisdom, then, then I would argue, but again, we don't have to stick on this point. Uh, I would, I would argue that everything that has now resulted from this necessary being is a result of wisdom. Now, just because, just because we don't understand it, or we have a certain expectation of it, I'll give you an example. Somebody may look at a knife and say that's not a wise invention at all. Completely and utterly unwise. Right. But somebody else that forages for berries in the forest, or even my mum who wants to peel an apple for me, she would understand and appreciate the use. Yeah. So so again that, that could be subject to a person's understanding. Or a cat would not understand and appreciate a Wi-Fi router. It would very happily urinate on there. Yeah. But if I saw my cat urinating on my router, it's not going to be a happy day for me. Right. You know what I mean? Because I understand the complexity of the Wi-Fi router. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is um, the, the, the argument from ignorance that just because we may not conceive something to be of certain use, or we may not think of it to be wise, doesn't necessarily mean it's wise. But I, I, I grant your premise, which is that the inference to the best explanation is wisdom. Um, and then we can kind of proceed on from there. But and the wonderful thing now, Michael, is the four characteristics that I've given the necessary existence is pretty much the Islamic definition of God. So you are in line with the Islamic definition of God. So then moving on, wisdom, one thing that I would argue here is if we accept that inference to the best explanation is God, 
or the necessary existence who we uh, deem to be God to be wise, it's unwise to create things with no purpose whatsoever. Would you agree with that? If not, feel free to give me an example. Well, I, what, what is, we need to define what purpose is. Purpose... Because, I, mean, I, I can say, I can create something that you function, think has no function. purpose, but for me it's entertaining. But that's, that's a purpose. Right. So function, so, I guess. So, so, so GTA 6, I guess, yeah, that was in social media. A lot of people have issues with that. A lot of people are saying, you know what, that's, that's going to be fun. Yeah, so it fulfills the purpose for which it was created, which is to entertain people. Can you use the money from GTA in shops? Of course not. Can you use it to, you know, get married to somebody? I, I haven't come across a situation in which that's possible. So I, there, there, is, <laughs> there is a purpose. So to simplify purpose, let's just link it to functionality. So there necessarily needs to be a function, wait, function of like our life on Earth? What are you talking about? Yeah, so what I'm saying is, my, my, my point to you was, you can't be wise and create something with no purpose. Uh, I'm actually going to disagree with you on that one. How, You're fantastic. What, so functionality is your definition of purpose. Mm, it's a very simplistic way what of if, us. What if yeah. this wise God just got bored and was like, let me just experiment and create something very well designed just because I can? Is that impossible? But that's what I'm saying. For a, for a wise creator to just do things for no reason whatsoever, no purpose whatsoever, it goes against wisdom. I'll give you an example. If my professor comes into the lecture hall, we've got exams coming up and he starts doing a break dance. And then I raise my hand thinking, you know what, maybe this has got, this is an analogy. He wants to teach me something. Yeah. He's doing a Mr. Miyagi on me, yeah? yeah, yeah. So I want to find out, <laughs> wax on, wax on, particles off or yeah, what, what? Yeah. no, he's doing one of those ones. Yeah. And I ask him, sir, what was that? He was like, no reason. No, no, not even that. He's not even dignifying me with the last thing. Because I can. Right. Would my impression of him would be that he is a wise professor that understands I've got exams coming up, he's intelligent, he knows what's going on, or would my kind of appreciation of his wisdom go down because of him doing a random action? Well, obviously yeah. in that context that is not wise, but again, consider the same professor in his office at his computer supposed to be doing research, he's just like, I'm really curious what these data look like, I'm not going to write a research paper, I just kind of want to play around with it just because I can. But, but, but do you see though, uh, this is what they say of child rearing as well. The best way that a child can learn is through play. So play is with the purpose of learning because what you're doing is you're finding out where all the bits go. But what I'm arguing is if there is immense intelligence of this necessary being, the necessary being doesn't need to tinker with things because that would, that would assume that there is lack of intelligence. Because somebody... Oh, he, but, yeah. but he's just entertaining himself. <laughs> but, but entertaining yourself would... Entertaining yourself how though? How would that... How, how can we see something that is... Uh, maybe God is laughing at us right now thinking about this. Like, they're so stupid. Are they actually trying to think about this? The, 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 the only way God would be laughing, yeah, uh, would be that, you know, there are people that actually don't believe that I exist. They, they, they actually believe that they, they came from nothing. That there was no order. This, this maybe, is... maybe people believe and just got it completely wrong. And he thinks that's funny too. Uh, the, the thing with that is, that would mean that the, the, the creator is manipulative. Or yeah. just has a good sense of humor. A, a, a sense of humor, but imagine creating something and not putting that thing in place. I would argue that there is enough evidence, there is enough faculties that we have to determine, I'll give you an example. One of those faculties or one of those knowledge that all of us have is called the innate disposition to believe in God. Yeah, Justin Barrett, yeah, yeah, yeah he, yeah. yeah the University of Oxford, he, he conducted a sociological experiment uh, of, of, over many years, many right. countries, and he concluded that we are innately dispositioned to believe in a God. Historically, yeah, most cultures have always believed in a God, yeah, or multiple. Even, 
Yeah. Not, even if a person is left in the forest, yeah. even if a person is alienated from society, they would believe in a creator of sorts. Yeah. So bearing that in mind, and then when a person looks at, say, a butterfly, a sunflower, when a person sees a system, order, a person concludes that I didn't just come from nothing, I came from something, and then that journey begins. So I guess, Michael, what I would argue was the, 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 the creator, if he creates us, he's given us a purpose to recognize him, to know him, and we have certain weaknesses and we, we rely upon him, it doesn't make sense for him to be laughing at our misery. <laughs> it would make sense for him to be assisting us during our misery because that is more fitting of a wise God, uh, of an intelligent God. I'll give you an example. Fitting and makes sense doesn't mean it has to be that way though. It makes sense, but but then we come um, back to the I, inference to the best explanation. I, I can agree it makes sense, but that doesn't mean it's true. No problem. <laughs> but what I'm saying, Michael, is that let's just say me as a human being, yeah. with, with my limited understanding, limited wisdom, definitely a um, lot of things. Yeah wrong but let's just say I'm with my kid yeah, yeah he's he's doing something that is detrimental to him mm. like really detrimental right, All right. <laughs> well, <prat. laughs> well, so, sometimes you do need to let kids make mistakes because that's how they learn you but, do yeah but to a limit right right and if you if you're seeing how these these guys just I mean not not getting overly political so, so here now, now you're talking about God being good yeah so now you got into that whole intelligent powerful good but, but here's, here's going to be the difference here um, with with the stance that you're used to with regards to christianity we don't believe he's all good no he's not all good no no no. Oh. we don't say all we don't say all good because we believe god has other characteristics as well mm. all good would imply that that's it doesn't it make sense that god would be good Going it, back to no no Christ. no it would make sense for god for god to be good for yeah. god to be wise for god to be loving but to only say that this one characteristic encompasses him, that's false. Because in order to be just, sometimes, you, like you said, you have to let somebody make a mistake. Yeah. You have to let a child cry. Okay. But then you, a person would say that is not a good mother. Right. But she is a good mother, but that woman or that mother, oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Or, 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 or that, that um, mother, is you know she's loving yeah yeah she's she's being just right. she's she's being merciful etc etc are we backlit yeah yeah, yeah. We're backlit. that's fantastic you know right, is that is that was that bad yeah, it was too bad. okay okay <laughs> so so in that sense yeah yeah <clears throat> so i guess what i'm trying to say is that if, if you look at the inference to the best explanation and you're like what best suits the situation i agree with you there is conversation that can be had about the the branches that you said, and we can explore those. It's fantastic, yeah. And, and I like the fact that you brought it up. But if we, because I don't know if I'm going to see you again. If I knew that, yeah. So if I knew you coming next week, then we could have put certain things on ice and said let's get back to them. Sure. But because I know I'm going to, only going to see you once, yeah. I want to kind of give you like a coherent, cohesive picture. All right. So you got something to go away with and yeah. then that maybe you can supplement later. So I'll leave in a minute, but I'll, I'll listen to your closing statement and then I'll get out here. Wicked, yeah. wicked. So then if we accept those things, which you said that resonate with you, and I agree with you that there are certain issues by saying that God is all good, you know, he loves everybody and this, there's certain issues with that. Yeah. But even before we get into that, we have accepted in this conversation there has to be a necessary existence. It has certain characteristics. Those characteristics um, or qualities are that which Muslims believe that to be of God, um, then my argument would have been that it's not befitting of a wise God to create human beings, just leave us. It would, it would necessitate or it would suit God to communicate and build that bridge of us. Thank you. So uh, for, for us, for, for that bridge of knowledge, of us to gain that knowledge from God and how to live an effective life because although the argument that you probably would have given because I'm on times two mode now um, would be that um, you know there are certain things that we can intuit and I in, intuit and I would agree with you but not everything can be intuited sure. oh, and, yeah. and that's why there is in, in morality there is such a disjunct such a disagreement I mean you look at for example the Israel Palestine um, issue that's going on, even the arguments pertaining abortion, 
even the uh, arguments pertaining LGBT, you know, these are moral arguments and there is no moral consensus. So this argument that, you know, no, we have everything that can be intuited, it's actually, I don't think that's, I don't think that's accurate. There are certain things that we need guidance from, uh, from this all knowing to, to kind of assist us in this. <clears throat> and then the argument would have been, which of the books makes the most sense? Yeah. yeah? And before I leave you, uh, I'm just going to, you know, just fast fast forward. Yeah. So what makes the Quran different? You probably would have said different books make different claims. I would argue that the Quran, well, one of the things that the holy book has to have is preservation. Yeah? If a holy book comes from God and it's no longer that book from God, yeah. then how can you rely upon it for your salvation? It's a weak document. It's unreliable. And I would argue that the Quran from the ancient religions is perfectly preserved. And the three ways that you can measure it to be perfectly preserved, and again, we're being filmed, you can check these later on as well, is number one, a live language. The Quran is in Arabic, it's just a live language. It's the top five spoken languages in the world. Old Testament is in Hebrew, not a live language. Jesus spoke Aramaic, not a live language. Um, even Greek is not necessarily a widely accessible live language. So we've got live language, we've got um, memorization. Quran is the only ancient book which has been memorized from cover to cover from children as young as six. So this is part of you know, the Islamic culture to memorize holy scripture. And I would argue that if all the scriptures are burnt and destroyed, the Quran can be, yeah, it can be written word for word. And that's something that uh, you can explain to a 10 year old, a 20, year -old. you don't need like a degree or a PhD in theology or philosophy to understand this. I can explain to an average person that look, this is the Quran is preserved. And the third thing would be uh, manuscripts. We have manuscripts that have been carbon dated like the manuscript, the oldest manuscript we have of the Quran is in the University of Birmingham and it's been carbon dated by the University of Oxford. Yeah. You can Google this when you yeah. get home, BBC. Yeah. So the, 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 the Bible, the Old Testament doesn't claim this, the New Testament doesn't claim this, the Vedas doesn't claim this. So this is what makes the Quran stand out from the other books. And then the other thing would have been that we would have engaged with prophecies, like what prophecies are the Prophet made? And then you could have told me some prophecies and we could have kind of discussed about that because if somebody claims to be a prophet, there needs to be ways that you can, if I tell you a prophecy, Michael, and you're somebody that, again, you don't want to fall within that circularity of, oh, okay, you've heard that from a guy called Mohammed, a uh, uh, guy, not the prophet, a guy called Mohammed, and he heard it from a guy called Ahmed. He heard it from this guy and that guy. And then I would understand that you're saying that, look, it's just within your religion, frankly. So there is a prophecy that's actually in the Quran yeah, of the Byzantines that they would win between six to nine years. It's in the Quran and at that time the Byzantines were losing. But then this prophecy has been chronicalized by somebody called Theophanes. Yeah, he was not a Muslim. In fact, he was a Christian and it's in the Chronicles of Theophanes who's verified this prediction of the Quran taking place. He didn't mention that it was something that, you know, it's true because of the Quran. He's verifying that this took place, that the Byzantines did indeed win. So although the prophecy is in the Quran, it can be cross-checked and cross-referenced by a non-Muslim source. There's also small ones that the Quran said that this individual, the Quran pretty much said that he's not going to accept Islam. He was alive. He was actively working against Islam. His name was Abu Lahab. Yeah. All he had to do was say, okay, so the Quran says, I'm not going to accept Islam. He accepts it then because, well, yeah, I get Do you it. see? Yeah, yeah. But he didn't. Yeah. He didn't. It didn't even occur to him and he didn't, yeah. yeah, he didn't even survive till the conquest of Mecca, which everybody pretty much accepted the Islam at that time. So it's like the author of the Quran, we believe to be God, knew that he wouldn't survive till the conquest of Mecca. So then I would have talked about prophecies. And then, um, yeah, so the Quran and the prophecies, and then I would have kind of made the argument and then, you know, uh, you could have looked into it and then hopefully we could have, you know, um, uh, spoken again. 
However, I do have social. I'm on social media. Yeah. I have something called Smile to Jannah. Jannah is Jannah. Yeah, Jannah is J A N N A H, which is paradise. It's my YouTube channel. Right. Smile to Jannah. Be on there, I assume. Um, no, this will probably okay. be on Smile to Jannah Extra. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll go find it. Yeah, so it's going to be on Smile to Jannah Extra. Cool. And uh, on if if you do have any questions or you want to talk or whatnot afterwards, have a listen. Have a look at the things that I said. And um, do, do you live local or I you? Live just, local, yeah. Okay, then just message me. We just off camera. We just meet up for a cup of coffee, and then we just bounce off each other. And can if I, something intrigues, I'm gonna step out. Yeah, but it's gonna be fine. Really Thank nice you. to meet you, Michael. Right, you okay, yeah, I'll take the mic. Right. Thanks.